everyone. Welcome to Tech Talks. Today we have Dear Kristen, and she has a wonderful YouTube channel. She does skits on the 16 personalities, and she has a series called Personality. So if you want all of that wonderful jazz, go check out Dear Kristen. It is wonderful, spectacular, and all shades of amazing. Seriously, guys, you, you won't be disappointed. You will just be very much struck by the amazingness of all her videos. So if you want to laugh, if you want to have a good time, go check out her channel. I'll link it below. And so, yeah, hi, Kristen. Hi. <laughs> what got you into type? My sister got me into type um, in 2012. She's an ENFP and she found it really interesting. Um, she started dating her INTP boyfriend, now husband, and they together got into it. Um, and uh, she basically said, this is a thing, you know, she told me and my other two siblings about it and she typed us on the spot like she'd already obviously done a lot of thought about it. And at the time I was like, oh, cool, you know, like an interesting thing. Like, But my sister doesn't really come home with those sorts of, uh, she's not into those kinds of personality fads. So it, I kind of listened to her immediately because um, I knew it would have to hold some water if she was saying it. Uh, and so she typed me as an ESFP and then I went, online to take the test just for fun and we all bonded doing that which is awesome and I got ESFP as my result and I have ever since on the online tests um and yeah so the fact that she guessed me as an ESFP and then I myself got ESFP as a result was obviously like oh okay interesting there must be something to this uh but then I went like years and years without really looking further into it I thought I understood it pretty well but I hadn't even like begun to look at like the cognitive functions or anything like that it was like five years before I actually finally did and then it was as I grew up and I became more interested in self-development I sort of realized that some things didn't make sense or there were um some barriers in me and my friendships that I wasn't quite understanding and um yeah just type had been a like perpetual sort of conversation in my family and it just evolved over time and we learned about the functions and we discovered uh, websites and YouTube channels. And so through that, I like realized there's so much more to this. And then it began really helping me in my relationships. And I was like, this is sick. I'm not getting rid of this. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's like a hack. <laughs> yeah. Type is here to stay. <laughs> it's a hack into people's minds. You get a shortcut into understanding their wiring. It's very quite intimate, yeah. actually. <laughs> And so for viewers, there's a little bit of an internet connectivity issue today, but we will power through nonetheless, just to let everyone know, <laughs> no worries. I will invite you back some other time too when your internet's better as well. So in the comment section, people tend to call you female Frank James. How do you feel about that? Like, oh. Because you both make 16 personality videos. That's really nice. Like Frank, I really like what he does. And I think he's hilarious, so that's cool. I don't know. I mean, there's other people who do personality skits on YouTube, so I don't know why I've got the term female Frank James. Maybe it's because I have dark hair. I don't know. But, um, yeah, no, I think that, that's, that's very flattering. That's very nice of people to say that, for sure. Kristen's content is amazing. If you like 16 personality skits, you will be in love with her content. Wow. And so... so selling me up here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so what things about the ESFP personality do you relate to? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, the biggest thing is how easy it is for us to be present in the moment. That was something that first grabbed me about the description about the ESFP and the fact that they, the stereotype tells us that we like to perform and entertain people. And that's something that I just for my entire life that have loved to do ever since I was young. And I even, you know, sort of before dabbling into YouTube, I was uploading on my private Instagram and Facebook like videos just for the fun of creating and entertaining people. And, you know, it came with the the um the negative the negative comments of such things as like, oh, this is attention seeking behavior and all that, which I'm sure if you're an ESFP watching that you've you know, um, it was literally always just to entertain people and to make people happy and to laugh. 
And because I, one of the things I think I do about all the jokes I tell in my day-to-day -day life, which is many, uh, I just, I just do it for the person's reaction. Like that's just, if I see a person laugh, I'm like, this is great. So the ESFP personality description helped me to understand that that was okay for me to be that way. And I was like, ah, oh, this makes so much sense. I really do just like entertaining people. And um, that was like certainly awesome in terms of my own self love as well and self-acceptance for like my gifts and what I like to do. And then of course, there's like the not thinking about the long-term consequences of things, which is a result of our obviously bottom and eye function um, amongst other things, I'm sure. But every time I see someone talk about how that bottom and eye function comes into play or doesn't come into play, I relate very heavily to that, which is awesome because it's helped me to stop and be like, oh no, this is like a this is like a tendency of ESFPs to or to think about the different possibilities of things or to not be able to like perspective shift. And so to, as I've grown older and cared more about developing myself, I've learned to like stop and take the moment to put that filter there before I speak and think and then not be so hard on myself when I don't foresee something coming or when I'm acting in the moment because there are negative sides to that, but there are also a lot of positives like, um, a lot of people have said to me that I'm really good at like bringing bringing them into the moment and making them have fun and stuff. And that's like a huge positive of that. I love that. If I can do that in people's lives, then that makes me happy. So, Kristen's ability to entertain really makes her make great YouTube videos because of her ability to ESFP, bring people into the fun moment. <laughs> it makes for amazing YouTube videos that you should go check out. Uh, cough, cough <laughs> down below. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so subtle. <laughs> look, I'm just promoting your strengths. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, Kristen, what is your experience with your SE? Do you have an example of times you've been in your SE? Mm hmm. <laughs> yes. 95% uh, of my life, I'm in my SE. And um, just anytime I like, anytime I even just get in the car to drive and I'm like, okay, I'm going to do some thinking or like, I'm going to, you know, listen to a podcast or something. And I literally just, um, I can't even just, I can't even focus or, or think deeply when I'm driving because there's just this, this stimuli of like um, the cars driving past and what I, all I really just want to do is roll down my windows and blare some music really loud. And that's what I always end up doing. Even when I say I'm going to do something profound as I'm driving, I'm just like, got to be, um, like it literally just gives me life being just stimulated in all of the sensory ways. So there's, there's that as a small example. And then there's just, I guess, more the day-to-day -day examples of literally like I live in a house of three other girls and I cannot, for the life of me, stick to a bedtime if I tried because I'm always just like, let's have fun, let's chat, let's do something. And so what happens is, and this has been a, it's been like a constant in my life, is I've had this habit throughout my entire life of staying out really late, even when I set myself a bedtime, like 10 p.m., right? I'm like, okay, Kristen, you're going to leave this party at 10. You can't, you can't stay later. And then, you know, I'm in, I'm absorbed in the fun and I'm like, oh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll say some, I'll say something like, oh, I was really meant to go home at 10. And then someone will be like, no, stay out. You're having the best time. And I'll be like, okay, <laughs> like not hard to convince whatsoever. So what's, what's happened is I've had to, I've ended up doing things like staying out till 5am when I have like work the next day. And um, but what's really cool is I worked, I worked as a kindergarten teacher in South Korea for two years. And that was something that I did, um, like I did that a lot in Korea, like the going out because, I mean, I, I don't know if you've been to Korea, but the night, night life there is an ESFP's dream. Um, and so I would stay out quite late and then I'd go to work the next day and I wouldn't have had necessarily a lot of sleep. So I might go into work tired, but then also the sensory stimuli of like all the children coming up to me and like, you know, hugging me or saying hello and good morning. And I'd be like, let's play a game. And, you know, from such an extrovert, like they would build my energy up again. And then like I'd go out again after work and engage in more fun times. 
and then the same thing the cycle would repeat all over again so in my early 20s it was like this perpetual cycle of that kind of thing which was awesome just like living life in the moment to the fullest but then of course you know as time went on and I grew older I kind of realized like wow there's a whole lot of self-development that I didn't do or a whole lot of you know squashing of issues that I was going through because I was so present in the moment those are some examples that I can think of and it's just in the day-to-day as well like just yeah like I I'm not so great at planning ahead it's just, it's not natural for me so I feel like it's just so clear that that SE is sort of running my brain most of the time that's amazing you're a fun time encapsulated in a person <laughs> yeah yeah if if people want instant joy instant laughter in a human being they can just come to you it sounds like you like to go where the action and where the sensory stimuli is <laughs> yeah that's amazing yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. but it's also like the joy comes a lot from the people that i'm with as well so it's the people who are the more introverted types who or the types who are more in their head and can't bring themselves in the present moment as easily like bringing people into the moment and having fun having fun is like what gives me joy and what gives me energy in life because there's nothing to say that like if 20 ESFPs were in a room together we would get the same amount of joy and fulfillment from it we would probably drain each other in a lot of ways you know so it's like it's that's just one of the most beautiful thing about things about MBTI is just realizing all of the beauties about all the different types and mm -hmm. like I have so much that I admire and respect in other types as well and it's it's the value that my role plays in the life of those other types that gives me fulfillment and energy you know what I mean yeah people is where it's at like bringing people happiness brings you juice <laughs> it, it gives you battery juice to make other people happy that's so wholesome and pu pure happiness for me is being present in the moment and being spontaneous and being engaged in the sensory but mbti has helped me to realize that that's not necessarily how all the other types or people feel the happiness sometimes they're just not actually going to really appreciate when you are just all about like let's get up on our feet let's go out and do something so um mbti has helped me to like realize not everyone likes to like gets happiness the way that you do Kristen and there are other ways to give type happiness or give happiness like help people to reach their happiness um and that's in turn allowed me to realize the different elements to my personality uh that I wasn't accessing before necessarily so realizing that I that I do have more for instance depth to me than I thought that I did which is Ooh. great <laughs> yeah and what is the steep part of you? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you didn't warn me that we'd be going down this road. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think ESFPs who maybe are a bit more self-developed who have a lot more life experience actually have a lot of insight to offer into the aspects that they've spent their whole life building up their SE data on because a lot of ESFPs, if you come to them and you're like, oh, here's this question about life that I have, they might not know the answer to it because, you know, we place so much emphasis on that SE data. If we don't have data to back that up, we're not going to be able to give you what we believe is like a good answer or an accurate answer. However, if we come to you and we answer that question with like, this is how it is, like, and where we can cite examples from our lives and stuff, we, I've often found that in areas where I have had a lot of life experience, I can be a lot more accurate with the data or the information that I give or the wisdom that I give to people because of my life experience and I place so much emphasis. So you might not get a lot of insightful comments from ESFPs, but like especially in their youth, no, I'm going to say actually in their youth because ESFPs can absolutely be insightful. All types can be insightful. However, when... <laughs> covering my bases there <laughs> however when an, when an ESFP comes to you with like a this is how it is this is what my intuition is telling me or this is what the data has told me um I feel like it could have a higher degree of accuracy than than some of the other types who are maybe just speculating I don't want to say like types and like put those really strong boundaries with like barriers between them all but like other people is what I mean so there's certainly depth with like with the amount of life experience we have um 
we can we can be deep in we can we can be deep we can be deep in our advice that we give to people we can be deep in observations that we've made um yeah and also just i think everyone has the ability to be deep once they've started to realize that they care about self development and so the moment that you use mbti to access those bottom cognitive functions um you are being deep by diving into those and working out how they manifest and yeah we also are very like capable <laughs> and like capable of deep deep affection and deep love for people and that is i think something that esfps are like super ca like capable of and loyalty and um like lifelong sort of relationships for sure mm -hmm. yeah I love it when ESFPs, they give you their life wisdom nuggets. Like you said, they cite their life and they're able to give you the NI nugget from it. It can be very, very profound. And it's, it's very linked to real life. So it's advice that is directly linked to real life. Um, so it's, it's very yeah. applicable. It's lovely. And yeah, yeah. That's so great. you mentioned- trying to say like it took me so long to get to it and you just summed it up in a perfect sentence thank you <laughs> well I, I love how you say things with such charm every single sentence you say is jam-packed with charm like ten thousand points of charm <laughs> that's the esfp um skill wow. everything they do is just so charismatic and charmful Char the ch i made a new word because you guys are so charming it required the, the making of a new word, charmful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so you mentioned deep affection. I'm wondering if this is linked to FI, introverted feeling, and if you could dive into your auxiliary function. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. And possibly give an example if you'd like. I think it might have something to do with the fact that with FI, we're very aware of what we want. Like, again, maybe not when we're younger, because again, we don't have that data to back it up. But once we have the data and all that, we really refine that FI and nourish it. And it makes it very clear to us what we value in relationships. And we're very clear on it. And because we know what we want, when we seek that out in others and choose to develop long-term friendships with those people, um, we will be committed to those. It seems like sometimes we're not committed because we might be really slow at replying to messages or we might not make an effort to hang out with our friends like you might not hear from us for a couple of months, um, which, you know, can be problematic and that comes with one of the, one of the lessons that you learn as an ESFP. Um, but what like in our hearts and in our heads if we've decided to invest in a friendship we will you can guarantee that no matter how long you go without seeing us if you have a place in our heart you can always come to us at any point in years in months and we will we'll still we'll be there for you and we still love you and care about you also again coming with the se data and the life experience we are able to apply what we've learned in relationships which rings true in our lives to our current relationships and friendships so i've generally found we can be like quite good at well <laughs> i certainly personally found that because of the data the data that i've developed as an esfp i have become better at conflict management or recognizing what other people need in relationships or um, realizing patterns in myself, especially as I develop that and I reaching the patterns, realizing the patterns in myself of what's harmful in my behavior in relationships and realizing that this also comes with knowledge of MBTI, realizing that other people need different things. And so, it's again like all of these all of these realizations coming together in our lives no matter at what point they've happened in our lives they're building up our se data which we rely very very heavily on in like every element like if it's if it's happened to us it's true you know if it, if it exists in the real world if it's happened it's true it's real so we can we can be very good at learning the, the nuances in developing personal relationships with people who are quite different from us and so not only do we have that loyalty 
when you've when you've got that place in our hearts but we will also be probably we can also be really good at um practically being good friends and like also when you meet us you have our full attention most of the time which is which is great so that's fantastic Krista mentions a really interesting point about how if you're in the FI heart you're in it (laughs) there's a word that's associated with FI and it's constancy so it's basically if you have a place in their heart you are there to stay and they will have a constant feeling towards you like they'll constantly love you even if they're not seeing you even if they're not around you even if it's been months if you've made it in there you're in there for the long run yeah yeah 100 percent. and i i have friends who i haven't talked about in like sorry talked to in like honestly years and I still think about them and care for them and if they were going to call me tomorrow I'd be like yep I'm here for you what do you need no (laughs) that's so interesting about FI yeah love it yeah but on the on the other hand if you're not in their FI heart sometimes people think they're closer to ESFPs than they are too because ESFPs are so lovely that they're like this girl's my best friend or something and you're like I just met you (laughs) that's literally the story of my life like that is the story of my life. Like I, I, I'll go out for a night and I'll be like, yo, people I've just met for the night, you're going to be my buddies. We're going to have the best time tonight and we'll go out and we'll have the best night ever. I'll like share my heart with them in a sense and they'll tell me some life stories and then like we'll say good night and I'll have no plan or intention necessarily of seeing those people again or following up or making contact. Um, but, you know, as I've grown up, I've realised, like, maybe they would want that. So I've become better at being like, say, do you want to keep in contact? Or... <laughs> but, yeah, 100% people, I've, I've been called out a lot in my life of, like, like what, we had that really nice experience or we had that really nice chat and then you just, I didn't hear from you afterwards. It, that's weird. And I always feel bad. And so, oh, that's, it's something I can definitely get into a bad habit of sometimes, well, in the past and like I see inches of it coming back here and there but I need to remind myself like you had that great day with that person contact them let them know you still want to be in their life um yeah because it does it can take a while for them to get into the fi heart love that expression but you know I think like regardless of whether you're in there like we just I just personally I don't know if this is an esfp thing but I just love learning about people and from people and having experiences with people, obviously. So, yeah, that comes to the downside of sometimes I'll just have an experience with people and I'll feel like they're my best friend. But then it's like you could have been my best friend or you could have been someone I met yesterday. That sounds bad. but And I'll have just as much fun with you. Yeah. So bad. Is that bad? I don't know. <laughs> no, that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like you're in the moment enjoying whatever is there. Yeah. And sometimes people interpret it as more than just the moment. They're like, wow, this was significant in my life. And you're like, wow, that was just a in the moment thing for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what MBTI has absolutely helped me with is when I now make a new friendship or I'm out with someone or I meet someone new somewhere, I'm able to discern pretty, like I'll actively get in my head and try to discern what is what what is my intuition telling me about this person maybe like what cognitive function they're running with if i've intuited that they're the kind of person who's more like me i'll be more like okay cool yeah we're gonna have a good time it'll be great but mbti has also helped me to realize just when and this is also the data i've built up from all my different friendships when a person maybe isn't an se user and so i'll be like okay i need to make a certain degree of effort with this person that i wouldn't afterwards usually sometimes or i need to just not bear my heart with this people with this person or give them too much tonight or give them that like false sense of closeness and it's really helped me with like prudence in terms of like holding back certain sides of myself for information like and not giving too quickly because I think that's something that ESFPs can do like because we wear our hearts on our sleeves a lot. That makes a whole lot of sense. I'm glad MBTI has really helped you in that way. Yeah it lets you customize and personalize the way that you treat others because now that you know their type you can kind of customize how you treat them. Yeah. 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 
Kristen, I'm wondering when you talk about bringing people happiness, when you talk about your desire to bring people in the moment so that you can give them a piece of joy, it reminds me of your YouTube channel and about how your YouTube channel brings people so much joy. If you're going through the pandemic and you're feeling a little down because you're home all the time, you can watch Kristen's videos. You'll instantly increase in oxytocin and dopamine. So if you want an emotional high that is healthy and good, <laughs> go watch Kristen's videos. You will not be disappointed. That's really sweet, Joyce. Thank you so much for saying that. And I would also encourage you viewers to, to if, you, if you seek happiness, to find out what's important to you and chase that as well. Find out where your source of happiness and joy comes from. And I'm happy to, you know, I would love to have you on my channel, but at the same time, you know, you can find happiness with just yourself as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. So on a more serious note, it's important to really find the things that make you happy, the things that spark joy in you. And you find that out by knowing what your passion is. So the word obsession is normally used in a negative way, but obsessions can really help you figure out what you love too. For instance, if, you're, if your obsession is cooking or an obsession with putting outfits together, you, instead of suppressing that because other people may not be into it. So basically, sometimes we suppress part of ourselves to fit in. But when when you do that, you can sometimes squash the parts of you that make you beautiful. So if you, mm. like, this is the FI message. <laughs> like, if you, to, to be more um, yourself, uh, to find mm. what truly makes you happy and brings you joy, mm. is to figure out the thing, the little things that spark joy, the things that put you into a flow state, the things that make you want to wake up in the morning and to pay attention to those things instead of shoving them down. Some of the ways that people do this is by journaling. So if you write like three things you're grateful for in that day, you'll start to see a theme. You know, a theme will emerge in the things that you're grateful for. And mm -hmm. you'll be able to figure out what your passion is by figuring out the themes in your life that bring you the most meaning. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And I think one thing that, that um, if I may piggyback off that and say that one thing that MBTI, you know, it can kind of be like a limitation that you put on yourself if you take MBTI and you sort of put yourself in the stereotype of that and therefore say like, I can never do X, Y, Z because my type isn't good at that stuff. Or um, you, you might get lost in like what your bottom cognitive functions need to get involved in in order to develop and that so we're focused very much on like the negative sides of type of our type I find in the community a lot um but a really important message I think that comes with learning MBTI is that understand that each person is extremely different the gifts that come with being your type are extremely different as well and you have so many personal gifts and beautiful things that are part of your personality and don't like get weighed down by the things that your type isn't good at and focus too much on that but think about what your type is good at and chase that and chase what brings you that joy and it's gonna look different from the person next to you but there's nothing wrong with that you know like MBTI is like so good for just self-acceptance so I really encourage that as well like look at the positive sides of your type and the gifts that you can bring to others through that as well yeah, people use meditation or they use different types of exercises to get them in the moment, but they can also have an ESFP get them in the moment too. So <laughs> <laughs> if you want like a, a quick way to be in the moment, you could either choose meditation or an ESFP. <laughs> either one yes. works. Yes, yeah. very interesting, although you might find that um, where meditation is kind of tea, the ESFP is coffee. It's like I'll bring you into the moment, but I'll make you do seven things at once. <laughs> so it's yeah. not it's, it's not going to bring you that same necessary, necessarily going to bring you the same amount of relaxation. Maybe an ISFP hmm, who might be a bit more, more like, yeah, let's take that SE, but let's also talk about what's important to us. And like, let's feel the grass. Whereas we're kind of like, let's go do that adrenaline seeking thing. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably just an extreme version of the ESFP. I've often thought about, I've thought that to myself. 
then I'm like quite an extreme ESFP. <laughs> but yeah. That's what makes you wonderful. And so, yeah, Kristen makes a really good point about how not to use type to limit yourself, but to use it to expand yourself. Uh, a way I like to put it is type is like a hammer. You can either build a house with a hammer or you can smack someone to death with a hammer. Now, it's up to you what you use the hammer for. So yeah. type is only as great as you make it. So it's kind of like, you, you can use it for, for self-development, for understanding others, like Kristen said so well. If you, if you want to understand a friend and treat them the way that they want to be treated. So a good use of type is the, gold, the golden rule and the platinum rule. So the golden rule is treat other people the way you want to be treated. But the platinum rule is treat others the way they want to be treated. So type helps us honor that different people want to be treated in different ways. Yeah. And so type has a million amazing uses. Oh, and yeah, yeah. It's good for spotting patterns in yourself and spotting patterns in others. And it's yeah. also really fun to make cool skits like on Kristen's <laughs> channel. Yeah. And my, my skits go with the stereotypes a lot, a lot of the times because you know you've only got five seconds per type, but there is so much depth to each type that like, I can't dive into in those five second skits, which I feel bad about sometimes. And I hope like as time goes on, I can dive into deeper dimensions of type on my channel. Um, but yeah, like understand as well that you don't have to fit into that stereotype and it's okay if you don't and try and push that stereotype, try and push those limits that MBTI sometimes feels like it wants to put on you and discover more about yourself and your potential. <laughs> So MBTI, the purpose is to not label you. How I see it is like you're already labeled and you don't know it. So when you figure out what your label is, you're able to control it. So you you can kind of go like, I can be more than this. The moment you know you're in the box, I don't know, the moment you know you you fit into certain patterns, the moment you can break out of them. So it's kind of like... Oh. Um, it's kind of like the matrix. You figure out you're in the matrix. Or when you realize that you're playing into certain patterns, you're able to rewrite those patterns. Type is there for you to gain self-awareness so that you can individuate. Because Carl Jung wanted us to go through the process of individuation to become your best self. Yeah, type is more of a starting place. So it's like your preference, but you can always become mm -hmm. more than your preference. Yeah. A way yeah. that I like it being put is that it's it's not what you can or can't do. It's what you will or won't do in an ideal world. So, mm. yeah, type is amazing. It's meant to expand your worldview. Um, it's not meant to limit mm. it. It's a really good conversation starter, too, because now that you have a few general qualities of someone's personality type, you can dig in deeper into their own unique idiosyncratic expression of that type so yeah. it's almost like once you figure out they're in the ESFP zone you can figure out what type of ESFP they are within that zone so mm -hmm. the possibilities are endless within that zone mm -hmm. so it's it's not a limiter because it can type can e express itself in an infinite amount of ways so it's not limiting like there's an infinite amount of expression in each of the types so basically, types are not the stereotypes, they're the cognitive functions. And the cognitive functions can express themselves in a million different ways. Yeah, so amazingly put, Kristen. Oh, thank you I so much. I was to say to you, that was, that was such a good way of saying all that. Thank you. That was so perfectly expressed. And you'd said some things I hadn't thought about in terms of how you express them that makes so much sense about types. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kristen, for coming out. You are a ray of sunshine. You really provide people good giggles, a fun time, entertainment. And I love your deep side too that you brought out during this. Yeah, your channel is splendid and so are you. The content you make is just so wonderful. Like when I watch it, it's like a, it's like a show that you can't put down. It's like you're, you're watching a Netflix show and it's such a good Netflix show that you keep watching. That's your channel. <laughs> it's like those Netflix sh shows you want to binge all the time. So wow. thank you for that. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're so kind. That's so beautiful, everything that you said. Thank you. I feel like you've, you've filled up my love meter for the day. Thank you. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I'm only returning the wonderfulness you put into the community. Yeah. You're able to dress up in all these different outfits to convey the types in, in a way that makes it uplifting. And it's amazing in 10 billion thousand ways. <laughs> yeah. With you, there's never a dull moment. You'll you'll do like little performative type of body <laughs> movements. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Sometimes I feel like I'm like constantly performing. Sometimes I'm like, what even is my real personality? <laughs> but yeah, I like I like doing that. I'm very expressive. I am aware. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. If you know what's good for you, check out Kristen's channel. It's linked below. And thank you, Kristen, for coming on. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joyce. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you despite the internet struggles. Um, but yeah, like, oh, so nice to get to talk to you about type a little bit. And I hope like as time goes on, I can get to know a bit more about you too. I'd love to get to know you more too. Yeah. And thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, Bye everyone. Guys. Okay. It's probably coming up on 9.30 now, which means that I will have stayed for the two hours that I said I would. What? Oh, has it only been 30 minutes? Awesome. So what do you do for fun? Uh, well, I'm kind of into... Oh my gosh, is that Jerry? I haven't seen him in forever. Sorry, just a second. Ooh, carrot sticks. I should socialize. And then my boss ended up being really happy with the new system because, hello, it was color-coded finally. <laughs> Excuse me. Someone's just put a beer down without using a coaster. It's 10 o'clock now. Why aren't people getting tired? Why is that group starting another round of beer pong? Will I ever get out of here? Please, please release me. Oh wow, look at that guy. I wonder if he's just pretending to have fun. Is he really that happy? Maybe he's suppressing his inner demons. Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. Everything that's wonderful is what I Let's see. Who can I pick out here to drag into the corner of the room and have a deep and meaningful with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Um. This party is in direct violation of social distancing laws. But is it a gang of gorillas or a tribe? No, gang is for turkeys and for buffalo, and a tribe is for goats. So what's for gorillas? A troop? A parade? I must Google this. Just quietly get up and go to the bathroom. No one will notice. And I liked Florence, but this- Oh no! My favourite song just started playing next door, but I've just asked this woman to name her top three travel experiences. I want to know her answer, but the chorus is coming up! The chorus is coming up! What do I do? Oh, am I about to cut the cake? It's gonna take a lot to drag me away from you I have no personal interest in what this woman is talking about, but she seems to be quite convinced of what she's saying. Let me challenge that. Let me stop you there for a moment. Aren't these the exact people who two weeks ago were clogging up my newsfeed with public service announcements about how important social distancing was? Okay, remember, you've been trying really hard to listen more and to not get involved in other people's problems. Hold it in. Hold it in. Sorry, are you aware that you have abandonment issues? I wonder when's the right time to bring out the fireworks from my car. <laughs>